Hi, and welcome to the Service Lee Service Desk demo. <clears throat> here we have the uh, Service Desk menu, and we've got a lot of different applications here. You know, I'll pick out a few IT service management, um, human resources, um, you know, reporting, CMDB, asset. Uh, product portfolio management, time tracking, contract. Not not all organisations are going to need all of these, um, and I'm not going to demo all of them today. But I'll just start with IT service management. You can see here we've got these sort of ITIL aligned um, ITIL practices. But we're, let's look at incident management. I'm going to create a new incident. I'm on the service desk and I answer the call. Hi, this is Ben O'Loughlin. Well, hi, this is Andrew Venn. Hi, Andrew. How can I help? Well, my SAP session is locked. And uh, I say, sorry to hear that, Andrew. Let me just look into that for you. Okay, I'll just quickly look at the server. Yeah, it looks like your session is locked on the server. I'm going to actually unlock that for you. Um, try it now, Andrew. It works. I said, well, great. Thanks for calling the service desk, Andrew. And uh, please fill out the survey. Um, now, that happened in about 20 seconds. If I had to actually swivel chair, and it happened because we've got these deep integrations, intelligent actions in our case, um, which are a bit like sort of RPA, robotic process automation, um, connections to the SAP API. Um, but we've also uh, automatically chosen these, we've selected these next actions based on this here, because we've seen this a number of times before. We might need to see it five to 10 times before we start making intelligent predictions. Uh, but once we've seen service agents type in something like that and do something like this, we're able to then connect the dots and say, well, maybe we should suggest that every time. And then that speeds things up because no longer do they have to swivel chair around to the SAP application and sort of launch it and log in and find Andrew and find his sessions and then bounce the session and then close SAP and come back. You know, that's five minute operation. We can do that in 20 seconds using this kind of AI approach. We've also along the way, we've assigned it correctly and we've classified it and prioritized it correctly. If these are wrong, we can remove that routing and apply our own and the AI will learn from that. And maybe it'll it'll surface two or three different hypotheses about what this is and how it should be classified until it learns which is the correct one. We're also going to surface knowledge here. So um, SAP session locks. This is a procedural guide that looks pretty good. Andrew called the service desk, but he, if he had this guide, maybe he wouldn't need to call the service desk. So I'd attach that to customer communication. And I'll say, Andrew, try this next time, or words to that effect. And then I would send that email and then off that it go. And then if he gets locked out next time, he can self-serve and fix it. Um, so that's an example of an incident process that is um, powered by AI. Um, we like to call that agent augmentation. Um, but there's uh, a number of other things we can do in the service desk. Um, we've got a sort of a full CMDB, so that might show up. For example, a use case might be we've got an open incident uh, where we've got um, the load balancer is flapping here. So let's look at that one. Um, that will have a configuration item here of load balancer. And we, if you see this little eye icon, we can click into that, and then that's going to go to the related table. And this is the actual CMDB record for that load balancer. Um, and we've got, you know, the configuration item relationships um, here. We've got, it's actually dependent, uh, or, or the, the, this uh, load balancer um, is related to these other assets. Um, and we can actually look here, uh, if I can close that. Um, um, we could look at the impacted items. So if we're going to make mess around with this load balancer, well, we better know what is dependent on that. And we've got web servers that are dependent on that. Um, and we've got an e-commerce server that is dependent on that as well. And, and this is the sort of the service topology, if you will. So if from a change point of view, if we want to change, make a change to that load balancer, um, then we'd better know, we might want to pull in, for example, the service delivery manager for the e-commerce service or the business owner for the e-commerce service or, uh, you know, uh, technology owners for the web servers, for example, and say to them, look, we're about to bounce this load balancer because we need to take it out of the cluster and patch it or whatever it is that we're doing to it. Um, we may also want to inherit change windows from the e-commerce service, which might have a different change windows from the default IT infrastructure change window. Um, 
All of that happens within the change module. So let's have a little bit of a quick look at that. Um, and let me see if I've got a load balancer. Yeah, there's a load balancer change. Um, and it's got, it might have a related incident. Say the load balancer is flapping, and then it will have all of the usual stuff you'd expect here. Here's the priority impacted services, impacted CIs that we just looked at in that uh, service topology diagram. Um, we can have a schedule. Um, we can have um, a plan. So this is all configurable. You know, your, your organization might have a document repository um, for this kind of stuff. So we just might put a link to the SharePoint or we might include it within this system. Um, we'll have an approval process. And these there's nothing here but in this example, but we might populate those approvals with, um, you know, I'll give you an example here. So if we look at the, uh, this is the workflow that the, that change is going to go through, a new change, and then it's going to go through peer review, or it can be cancelled. And peer review, depending on what sort of change it is, major, minor, emergency, etc., that might have different sorts of approvals required. Once it's been approved by whatever means is appropriate, it'll go to pending implementation and then implement post incident implementation review and all of that good stuff. Now, if we actually look at that workflow in the editing view, for want of a better term, um, and we look at the change standard workflow, um, and we want to edit that workflow, then we'll see here, this is the edit version of what we were just looking at before. Now, if we've got an ECAB approval here, we can edit that activity, and we can modify the approval mechanism. So it's one approval or um, percentage of approvals or all approvals required or it's scripted. If it's scripted, then we'll have we'll have the advantage, ability here to say, well, we need three out of the cab members, but if any of them are if any of them are listed as on leave, then we need to include their sister-in-law um, or whatever it is, whatever custom logic we want, um, we can assign there. Um, so that brings me to, you know, a, a more broad discussion of workflow because um, uh, I, I, there's more I could say about the CMDB and asset management, and I, I, may, I may touch on reporting a bit later. Um, I can't really boil the ocean in this demo, but um, what we can do is uh, create our own workflows, and this is where it becomes more of a, a low-code workflow tool rather than just a service desk tool. So let's suppose... Um, I am in facilities and I, you know, have a new, I have a request to um, change the light bulb or, or uh, uh, yeah, let's just say, you know, clean up a spill. So let's call it spill management. And I'm going to extend that from the work table. I'm essentially creating a new ticket type here. Um, and the work table gives us a lot of interesting stuff. We're going to have a new application, and the new application is going to be called Service Lead Operations. And then the section name is going to be Facilities. Now, we could do this as a service catalog item or however we like. There's a bunch of different ways we could do this, but let's just make it a ticket for now. Um, <clears throat> now, once we've saved that, we're going to be able to... Um, oh, hang on. Spill management. I've used that before, have I? Okay, let's call it spill management two. Okay, let me cancel out of that. Um, now I'm going to have a approver. Who's going to approve the spill? Who's going to assign? Then I might have a um, requester. Uh, maybe I've actually got a requester in the work table. Let's just see. Uh, yep, I've got one of those. So I can use that. Um, let's have short description and um, what about location? Do I have that? So maybe that's the you know that's the building and the floor. So I'll create my own location, uh, location, and I'll just make it a string. I mean, we'd probably have a database of all the different you know um, cities and buildings and floors and uh, offices and you know all that sort of stuff. But we'll just make that a text field for now. Um, we might want to have a workflow status, put that at the top, and we might want to have an SLA, you know, like 
because these spills have got to be tidied up within four hours. Um, that's our OHS occupational health and safety. So let's just save that. And once we've saved that, we'll basically we're basically deploying that to the database. Now you'd probably start doing this in a dev environment, but I'm just doing it on my demo environment here. Um, oh, now I probably want to actually see if I can move that down. I probably want to um, configure that a little bit more because um, it's a bit ugly. This is just a demo, but um, I'm going to say current status can be small, approval can be small, assigning can be small, requester can be small. Actually, requester I want up there. And then SLA status can be small, location can be small, short description can go down there. I want a horizontal rule here, just because. Um, Oh, it doesn't want to go up there. Um, there we go. Now I'll save. Now my form's looking a little bit more tidy. And I'm gonna I'm gonna create an entry. So the approver can be why not me? I'll, uh, the requester can be Chris Jones. Um, it can be assigned to Ben Linus, he's our maintenance guy, and the location is Ben's office or whatever, and this is um, uh, chicken ramen spill. All right, so now I've actually submitted a request for, a, and again, this could be through the portal as a service catalog item. So what happens to it now? Well, uh, it'll go through a workflow, which we haven't created yet. So let's go and do that. Um, let's go to workflow. And we should see our spill management to workflow. So let's um, uh, edit that workflow. So we're going to create a new spill management, and then the action is going to be um, to uh, assign staff. Well, we said it was going to be Ben Linus, but maybe maybe it's not. And then we're going to retrieve oops, retrieve cleaning materials, um, and then we're going to. Um, go into the spill clean and then we'll have an approval stage which is like um, approved all right so then we're just going to create connectors so let's say um, staff and we're going to have here we're going to have um, uh, locate oops materials. Now I'm not going to belabor this and do a million of these, but I'll just do a few and you'll see how it works. All right, so that's now saved. And if I go back to my menu, I've now got a service lead operations. Um, let's hide that. And I've got a facilities menu and I've now got a new spill management and all spill managements. Um, ticket types. So let's look at the spill management queue. And there's one in there. Let's open that up. And this is the ticket I created before. But now I've got a workflow. So the first thing I need to do is assign staff. So let me go there and uh, I'll assign it to Chris Devine. And then I've assigned staff, so I'll click on that. Now I need to locate cleaning materials. So I look at the location and I go, well, where's the nearest cupboard or where's the nearest vacuum cleaner or steam cleaner or whatever it is. And then once I've located that, then I go to the retrieve them and then I, I clean the spill and everything like that. But notice that these um, these um, you know buttons that are appearing have just been created dynamically um, out of the the workflow that we created in the workflow creator a few minutes ago. Um, now th those workflows, as you can see, can um, leverage off um, you know approvals. They can leverage off SLAs. They can leverage API calls, automations. They can leverage the AI. Um, so anything that the platform has, you can use in the custom apps that you develop. So that's look. That's a little bit of a, a brief overview of the Servicely platform. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and please get in touch if there's anything we can help you with or any questions you have. Bye for now.